The Endangered Species Act of 1973, the most essential wildlife law. How did the law come about? Well, ever since colonizers landed in North America, many species have suffered their demise. But one of the most noticeable species was the passenger pigeon. At one point, it was the most abundant bird in North America and perhaps the world, and by 1914, it was extinct. Then, the whooping crane, with a population over thousands, soon reached its lowest population level with only 21 birds in 1944. In 1962, Rachel Carson writes a book called Silent Spring. In this book, Carson warns the American citizens of the, un of the impacts of the unregulated pesticide use on wa wildlife and the American citizens. But wait, there's more. In 1970, the peregrine falcon becomes endangered. One of the reasons that the peregrine falcon becomes endangered is due to DDT. Due to DDT, pesticide biomagnification causes organochlorine to build up in the falcon's fat tissues, reducing the amount of calcium in their eggshells. With thinner shells, fewer falcon eggs survive to hatching. By the time the law is passed, the American alligator, the whooping crane, the bald eagle, the grizzly bear, the American gray wolf, the eastern red wolf, the California condor, and the brown pelican are all considered endangered. So what is the law exactly? Well first we must understand the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species. A species is considered endangered if it is in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. An example of an endangered species is the Bengal tiger. A species is threatened if it is likely to become an endangered species within the foreseeable future throughout all or significant portion of its range. An example of a threatened species is the koala bear. The Endangered Species Act of 1973, or the ESA for short, was signed on December 28, 1973, and provides for the conservation of species that are endangered or threatened throughout all or a significant portion of their range in the conservation of the ecosystems on which they depend. The ESA replaced the Endangered Species Conservation Act of 1969 and Congress has amended the ESA several times. Under the ESA, approximately 2,300 species are listed as endangered or threatened. And one of the most significant quotes to come out of this law is by Richard Nixon. Nothing is more priceless and more worthy of preservation than the rich array of animal life with which our country has been blessed. It, ha it is a many-faceted treasure of value to scholars, scientists, and nature lovers alike, and it forms a vital part of the heritage we all share as Americans. With areas like the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, some think that the ESA hinders economic development and provides federal agencies with more control than state agencies. Often, when an endangered animal is found on public land, use of the land is strictly regulated, which can inhibit farming, logging, and other commercial use of land, like natural gas drilling and coal mining. Hello, I'm Lindsay with Fox News, and today we are interviewing a hunter. So, Sheila, what is your perspective on the Endangered Species Act? I think that it should be lessened because I want to hunt my God-given right of buffalo, but they won't let me do it. I'm limited to once in my lifetime. Like, I have a family to feed. So why can't you feed your family with deer or elk? Because buffalo is better, you know? It's a lot more tender and, you know, you don't get as much of the gamey taste as you do with elk and deer. So, do you have any concerns about buffalo going extinct? Not really. They exist in other places that I've heard of. And after 45 years of being intact, the administration wants to now remove it. With one vote, you can help save these precious animals. So why is this law important? Well, let me tell you. From 1973 to 2013, the Act prevented the extinction of 99% of the species under its protection. The Act has shown a 90% recovery rate in more than 100 species throughout the United States. The Act has allowed the designation of millions of acres 
and critical habitat, which is crucial to species survival and recovery. In fact, imperiled species with federally protected critical habitat are twice as likely to be re recovering as those without. Just since 2008, the center has won designation for 233 million acres of critical habitat, 95% of all critical habitat acres set aside between 2008 and 2013, which is an area larger than the entire national forest system, twice as large as California, and almost three times the size of the national park system. And finally, the Act has poll-proven strong public support. A national poll commissioned by the Center in 2013 found that two out of three Americans want the Endangered Species Act strengthened or left alone, but not weakened. More recent polls have found even greater support, with nine out of ten people supporting a strong Endangered Species Act. Every good scientist always cites their work.